نحن كلنا على خطر نسهة المؤمن الفكر لذة المؤمن العبر نحن كلنا على خطر نسهة المؤمن الفكر لذة المؤمن العبر نحن كلنا على خطر نسهة المؤمن والصلاة والسلام على خير البشر حبيبنا محمد اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل الله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا صلوات الله وسلامه عليه عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق, وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد All praise is due to Allah. We praise Him. We seek His help and we seek His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and the evil of our actions. Whomever Allah guides, none can misguide. And whomever Allah leads astray, none can guide. I bear witness that there is no God or deity worthy of worship but Allah alone. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and messenger. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, dear guests, all you who believe fear Allah. Fear Allah the fear that he deserves and only die in state of total submission to Allah and to Allah alone. Today I have chosen to speak about prayer. Reason being is that a sister called me two days back and she is complaining that her husband does not pray or he neglects prayer. Mind you, this is a common problem that exists in many homes unfortunately. But the difference is that this sister is a revert. This sister, she is a revert. Revert means that she was a Muslim. As we all know that our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, كل مولود يولد على الفطرة every, every newborn is born as a Muslim. Naturally they believe that there is God. فَأَبَوَاهُ يُهَوِّدَانِهِ أَوْ يُنَصِّرَانِهِ أَوْ يُمَجِّسَانِهِ Then their parents, because of their influence, they turn them into a Christian or a Jew or a Buddhist or whatever. This sister has embraced Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect her. And she's a revert. She's not a convert. There's difference between revert and convert. A convert is the person that when Ayyadu Billah disbelieves in Allah. Originally that they are Muslims and then they become Christian and a Jew. So every person who is not a Muslim is a convert. And every Muslim, every Muslim that went on the wrong path 
or they have warayad billah, disbelieved in Allah, and then they came back to Islam, they are called reverts. That's what our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said. And what is so amazing about this story is that this sister may Allah subhanahu wa taala protect her and preserve her. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa taala that all sisters have the same quality as this sister. She's been a Muslim for about nine years. Her family have disowned her. She has left the country. She's here at the moment. She's got no one basically. And she has chosen a person that's supposed to be religious. But unfortunately this person has abandoned the second pillar of Islam. The second pillar of Islam. This pillar that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has warned those people who abstain from this pillar. He said, As-salat imad ad deen the prayer is the foundation of the deen. It is the foundation of the religion. Whomever abandons a prayer, they have disbelief. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, between a disbeliever and a paganist, billah, and the Muslim is the abandoned prayer. This is how dangerous it is to abandon the prayer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in Al-Quran, وَإِن تَابُوا وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةِ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةِ فَإِخْوَانَكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ Indeed, if they have repented, and they have performed prayer, and they have paid zakat, then they are your brethren in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set conditions to be a brother in Islam. It is compulsory upon every Muslim, saying mature. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has also commanded the parents to teach your children at an age of seven to pray. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advising the parents, teach your children prayer at an age when they are seven. Subhanallah al -Azim. This is something that we need to understand and contemplate. This is the second pillar of Islam. Everything here has got a pillar. The pillar of this building, you'll find that there are, there are pillars and foundation. And this building will not be on the second floor if there isn't strong pillars. And a Muslim needs to understand that there are five pillars and it is compulsory upon them to fulfill these prayers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who loves us and cares about us, has said, وَأَقِيمُوا salat And perform prayer. Perform prayer. It is compulsory that every Muslim compulse prayer. Regardless of the situation that you are in, as long as that you are insane, it is compulsory upon you to perform prayer. Even if you are crippled, even if you are paralyzed, as long as you are sane, it becomes compulsory upon you to pray. Even if you are sitting, bedridden, in your bed, it is compulsory upon you to pray, even without moving anything that you can't move. Even if you can't get water to wash yourself, to purify yourself, even in these circumstances, even if there's a war, even if you're frightened, even if you are on a journey, this act must never be abandoned. All other acts can be delayed, or you can be exempted from it. But a salat, no. Hajj, if you don't have enough money, then it does not become compulsory upon you. If you are sick and you can't fast, then it's not obligatory upon you. If you don't have enough money to pay zakat, it does not become obligatory upon you. But a salat, regardless of the situation, it is compulsory up on you, and we need to understand this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Inna salata kanat ala al-mu'minina kitaban mawkuta. Indeed, prayer has been prescribed 
on the believers at a fixed time, at a specific time. And this sister was asking me, am I to stay with that person who has abandoned prayer? The person who's grown up as a Muslim, in a Muslim family. How courageous is she? She's been abandoned by her family, and now, because this person has distanced himself away from Allah, she's thinking of abstaining from him, keeping away from him. But I recommend that, that she becomes, inshallah, she's patient, and she makes supplication, and she makes dua, that her husband would realize the danger of abandoning prayer, and he'll come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters, prayer is the message of all prophets. Our beloved allow us to begin with our final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he sent those people, he sent Mu'ad ibn Jabal to Yemen. And he said to him, he said, you're going to approach the people of the book. That means they are Christians, the Jews. Tell them to worship Allah alone. And if they were to accept, tell them that to believe in me as a messenger of God. And if they were to accept, tell them that Allah has prescribed that you pr pray five times during the day and night. Pray during the day and night five prayers. This is the message of all the prophets. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran about Jesus, peace be upon him. When he spoke in the cradle, he said, Inni Abdullah. Indeed, I am the servant of God. Al-Kitab. He's given me the book. And he's made me a prophet. And he's made me blessed wherever I am. And Allah, he has said, Jesus spoke in the cradle. And he said, Allah recommended. And this wasiyah, it is compulsory. That to perform prayer and to pay zakat as long as I'm alive. This is what Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, his first message to people. And allow us to look at the Bible. And I feel that if I was to highlight some of these quotes from the Bible, that they could delete them. Allow us to begin with Jesus, peace be upon him. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed. Matthew 26, 39. Moses, peace be upon him. And Moses made haste and bowed his head towards the earth and worshipped. Moses and Aaron, and Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tolerance of the congregation and they fell upon their faces. Ibrahim and Ibrahim fell on his face. Subhanallah. Joshua and Joshua fell on, fell on his face to the earth and did worship. Joshua 5.14. Ezra and the people and they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Subhanallah al -Azim. These, the things that I've just quoted at the moment, my dear brothers and sisters, it is from the Bible. It is from the Bible. If Jesus is God, why would he prostrate? Why? And why all the prophets that I've just mentioned, they all fell on their face and prayed. Why? Who does this today? It is only the Muslims. We are the followers of the prophets. We love them. We love them and we believe that they are servants of God. And we believe that they all came here, came to the face of the earth to convey one message, which is Islam, the, the religion of Allah. The religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen to all mankind to submit to Allah and to worship Allah alone. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala an, one of the greatest companions, he came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, what is the best action? What is the best action that a person can perform? What is the actions, the, the most preferred actions? He said, Praying on time. Praying on time. My dear brothers and sisters, our beloved Prophet who cares about us more than ourselves. And Allah cares more about us than the Prophet, peace be upon him. 
as he was dying, as he was dying, and his soul was exiting his body, he used to say, as salatu salatu salat. Pray, pray, pray. Pray. And then he'll become unconscious. And then he'll become conscious. And he would say, pray, pray, pray. He's advising his ummah. He's advising his people. And he knows that these people will pass on this message. How desperate we are for prayer. The Prophet Muhammad look how considerate he was. And look how caring he is. He said, pray people, pray. Don't lose the contact between you and Allah. What is prayer? Prayer is actions that will bring you closer to Allah. In prayer, you feel a sense of tranquility. In prayer, you will humble yourself and you would know that you are not Akbar. Allahu hu al Akbar. One of the biggest problems that we have with many brothers and sisters is they become too arrogant, too proud. I am the person who have successfully built this business. I am the person who did this and I am the person who did this. They don't realize that Allah has given them strength and Allah has given them intelligence. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pray. Prayer benefits you my dear brothers and sisters. Allah is not a need for us, we are a need for Allah. Allah is not a need for us. We are a need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the greatest way to be grateful to Allah is to worship Allah. To humble yourself, to humiliate yourself for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Knowing that Allah who al Akbar, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest. And you are the closest to Allah when you are prostrating. You are the closest to Allah in that specific position. When you are, when you say Subhan Rabbi al A'la. Glory to He who is most high three times. And after that, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. You ask Him whatever you want, as long as not haram. So you ask Allah and you beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. And whatever you are in need for. Salah is not a penalty. Salah is not a penalty that a person does. Salah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say to Bilal, Arihna biha ya Bilal. O oh Bilal, make us rest by prayer. Not from prayer, as some of the brothers, oh please, you know, let's pray quickly so we can rest from the prayer. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, with it, with the prayer, with rest. With it, they would feel a sense of security and tranquility with prayer. For that reason, when a person comes and says, Allahu Akbar, Allah is greater than every, everything that I own. Allah is greater than the kings. Allah is greater than any person. Allah is the greatest. Allahu Akbar. That's how you begin the prayer. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave a beautiful example for the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said to them, can you see, can you just imagine if there's a river that's flowing in front of your house? Can you imagine that a, a river flowing from in front of your house and you're washing five times a day? Can you see yourself? With any dirt remain on that person? With any dirt remain on a person? Can you imagine river? Not just normal stream, river flowing. Muhammad said, after the, a person washes five times, with any dirt remain on a person? Subhanallah, what an amazing example. The Sahaba have said, no, la yabqa min darni shay. Surely no dirt will remain on that person. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, فَذَٰلِكَ مَثَلُ الصَّلَوَاتِ الْخَمْسِ This is the example of the person that prays five times. يَمْحُ اللَّهُ بِهَا الْخَطَايَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cleanses your sinful acts. How merciful is Allah? How merciful is Allah? A man came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
And he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I have kissed a woman. Kissed a woman. SubhanAllah, it's a sin. We know that it's not accepted. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, look at this beautiful reply. First of, all, first of all, he waited for a revelation because the Prophet does not speak of his free will. He doesn't speak of his desire. He speaks through a revelation. Subhanallah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after he waited for a revelation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to him. وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةِ طَرَفَيِ النَّهَارِ وَزُلَفًا مِنَ اللَّيْلِ And perform prayer in the day and in the night. إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يَذْهِبْنَ السَّيِّئَةِ Indeed, your good deeds will wipe your evil deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةِ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ Indeed, prayer prevents you from the wrongdoing. Fahsha, sexual intercourse, fornication, adultery. Not any prayer, my dear brothers and sisters. Not any prayer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in Surah Al-Mu'mineen. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Indeed, the believers are successful. Those who focus and concentrate while they are praying. They are not praying as a, an act, like it's, it's a normal, but a custom or a tradition. They are focusing and they know that Allah is the Akbar. They are focusing, they are concentrating. They are understanding what they are reciting. The, nothing disturbs them. No whispering of shaitan or anything like this. They are focusing and they are seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil shaitan. And they're admitting of their weakness. And they're realizing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the greatest. Subhan al-Khalaq al-Azim. Subhanallah al-Azim. How many Muslims have neglected this prayer? How many Muslims? And they think it's a simple thing. Even some Muslims have reached the level thinking that you don't need to pray. It is a pillar of Islam. The Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, listen to the sayings of the Sahaba. They said, لا يرون شيئا من الأعمال لا يرون شيئا من الأعمال كفر غير تارك الصلاة. The Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they used to say, Allahu Akbar, listen to this. They, the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they never used to see an action that abandonment a person leaves that leads to disbelief except for abandoning the prayer. My dear brothers and sisters, you might have heard that some of the fuqaha rahmatullahi alayhim saying that a person that does not pray, he's still a Muslim. And you know that some scholars have said that he is not a Muslim. Would you like to be the center of dispute amongst the scholars? Would you like to be the center of dispute amongst the scholars, whether you are a Muslim or non-Muslim? Would you like to be of those? A'udhu billahi minash shaitan al-rajim. Would you like that the, that the faqaha, the jurisprudence, wal ayyadu billah, they are, they have dispute over a person that abandons prayer whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims. Would you like to be in that position? A'udhu billahi minash shaitan al-rajim. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan al-rajim. We need to understand that wallahi al-azim, as your body is in need for food, the greatest food that you can provide your soul, your ruh is as-salat. The greatest food that can be provided to your soul is as-salat. Can you imagine someone? He's hungry and thirsty. And you're bringing him food to eat and drink. And he's saying, no, I don't want to. I don't want to. And he's dying from hunger and thirst. Could you, could you contemplate this? A person who abandons prayer is the person who's abandoning what the soul is in need for. 
He is preventing what his soul is in need for. That is why so many people are on drugs. Because they are trying to provide the soul something that will satisfy them. Will give them a sense of ease and security. And they are trying drugs. And they are trying women. And they are trying what ayyadu billah alcohol. And they are trying gambling. And they are trying football. They are trying so many things. And they, they are satisfied for a short, short period of time. And then dissatisfaction will turn into anger and frustration. A salah make, makes you a better person. It makes you a better person. It makes you a person that is considerate. A person that recognizes that there are a need for Allah. Listen to this beautiful hadith which is Al-Hadith Al-Qudsi. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that Allah has said, Inna anzalla al-mal liqami salah wa ita'i zakah Indeed, the money that you had the money that has been descended to you, it is so that you can perform prayer and you can pay zakat. It is to perform prayer and to pay zakat. This is something that we need to understand. Wallahi al-Azim, your strength and your wealth, your sighting, your hearing, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So appreciate what Allah has given you. And Allah has said, وَلَا إِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ and if you are grateful to me, and one of the, the best way to show that you are grateful to Allah is to pray. Because it is Allah who has commanded you. It is Allah who has commanded you. It is not a prophet. It is not a president or whatever. It is Allah who loves you and cares about you and knows that you are in need for prayer. He is the one that has commanded you to pray. What is the excuses that we hear from brothers and sisters? What is the excuses that we hear from many of the brothers and sisters? Oh, they can't pray. Why? Oh, it takes too long. It takes too long, my dear brother and sister. It takes half an hour of your day. Can you imagine standing in front of Allah and saying, Oh Allah, I didn't have enough time for you. And Allah has given you 24 hours. And you don't have half an hour to pray. You don't have half an hour to show your appreciation to Allah, you don't have half an hour to satisfy your inner soul, you don't have enough time. What is the other excuse that we hear? What is the other excuse that we hear? We're too busy, so we have to pay our mortgages. Subhanallah al -Azim. You are willing to pay the bank its rights, but you are not willing to give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rights. This is not acceptable. Every Muslim needs to understand this. What is other excuses that we hear? What is other excuses that we hear from people? Oh, it's not important. It's enough for me to believe in Allah here, as many people say. As long as I believe in Allah, I don't need to perform prayer. Well, know this. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he himself used to perform prayer until his feet were worn out and subhanallah, they were cut because of standing in prayer. The one who had more faith than all of us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If iman is sufficient for a person without action, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam should have been the first person not to pray. But he was the total opposite. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa had iman more than all of us. And he prayed more than all of us. And Aisha radiallahu anha once, when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was performing prayer. And it was her turn that, that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is with her. And he asked her for permission. Can I pray? Because it was an optional prayer. It was an optional prayer. It is not the compulsory prayer. She said, I would like to be with your message of Allah. But I know that you want this so much. Yes, you may pray. The night of prayer. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was praying during the night until Bilal came and knocked on his door and he said to him, Oh Messenger of Allah, it's time to pray Fajr. Subhanallah al-Azim. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said, Oh Messenger of Allah, Allah has forgiven your past and present sins. Yani, in other words, ease on yourself. He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, look at the amazing saying. Shouldn't I be a grateful servant to Allah? 
Shouldn't I be a grateful servant to Allah? That's how we should be. That's how we should be. That's Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A man came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said to him, إِذَا صَلَّيْتُ الْمَكْتُوبَاتِ وَصُمْتُ رَمَضَانِ وَأَحْلَدْتُ الْحَلَالِ وَحَرَّمْتُ الْحَرَامِ وَلَا أَزِيدَ عَلَى ذَلِكَ شَيْءَ أَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةِ قَالَ نَعَمْ Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a man came to him. He's a Bedouin. And he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, if I was to pray the prayers that are compulsory and fast the month, of Ramadan and I will make what is lawful lawful I would fulfill what is lawful and I would avoid what is unlawful when I enter Jannah and I'm not going to increase anything on this all I want to do is this when I enter Jannah if I was to do this Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa has said now now you will enter Jannah my dear brothers and sisters if you want Jannah, you have to sacrifice. You need to get up in the morning and pray. You need to wait a little bit during the night and pray Aisha. You need to do these things. No one is going to hit, give you a house in this world for free. You have to work for it. You want a house in Jannah, you have to work for it. You have to sacrifice time. Muhammad Sallallahu said the two most difficult prayers on the hypocrites is Fajr a prayer and Isha a prayer. For those brothers and sisters that don't get up at that specific time, get up. My dear brothers and sisters. Another excuse that the shaitan comes up with, and he comes up with to those who have weakness and faith. We know that some brothers and sisters commit haram. Maybe they do something haram. They backbite often. They slander often. They tail carry often. They drink alcohol often. They gamble often. They cheat often. And these brothers and sisters would say, how can I pray? How can I pray and I'm doing this wrong doings? My dear brothers and sisters, know that this is whispering from shaitan. Shaitan would say to you, no. As long as you are doing these haram, keep away from prayer. You could never abstain from these haram until you start praying. You will never be able to abstain from these sinful acts, wicked acts, until you start praying. Until you start praying. Once you start praying, you will have a good connection with Allah. You'll have a good relationship with Allah. And then when you ask Allah, Allah will answer you. And Allah will respond to you. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, فَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when my servants ask you about me, when the servants of Allah ask you about me, tell him that I'm near, ujibu da'wat al-da'i idha da'an. I would respond to the caller when he calls me. There is no excuse for anyone. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, look at this amazing hadith. It shows you the importance of prayer. Inna awwal, ما يحاسب به العبد يوم القيامة. The first thing that a person will be held accountable the day of judgment. The first thing is a salat. The first thing that you will be held accountable the day of judgment is a salat. Subhanallah. فإن صلح فقد أفلح وأنجح. If a person is successful. If a person is successful in performing prayer, that's the first question, my dear brothers and sisters. You'll be asked, is your prayer, have you performed prayer? What kind of excuse are you going to say to Allah? Please, give me a sufficient excuse. Give me an excuse that will, that will Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept. After knowing that Allah has created you to perform prayer and praise What excuse are you going to give? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, فَإِنْ صَلُحَتْ If the prayer is correct, if this person has performed prayer, فَقَدْ أَفْلَحَ وَأَنْجَحَ Indeed, this person is successful and safe. وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَقَدْ خَابَ وَخَسُرَ And if this person did not perform prayer, 
Indeed, he's a loser and he's unfortunate. My dear brothers, allow me to explain to you how a person prepares themselves for prayer. And it shows you, I'll show you how quick it is. Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu described the acts of evolution, wudu, before prayer. And he said, that's how I saw Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam perform prayer. And this hadith is agreed upon. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ghasala kaffayhi. He began washing his hands. Very simple. Wash your hands three times. Up to your wrist. And then put water in your mouth. And wash your mouth. Rinse your mouth properly. And throw it out three times. Up your nose. Up your nose and clean with your left hand. Three times. Get some water and wash your face. From where the hair usually grows until the bottom of your shin, from ear to ear. If you're baldy, you'll still start washing from here, not washing from the back. You wash three times. You get some water without being extravagant. Don't turn the water full on. Muslims should not waste water. Regardless whether you are in a hotel or wherever you are, Muslims don't waste. إِنَّ الْمُبَذِّرِينَ كَانُوا إِخْوَانَ الشَّيَاطِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Indeed, those who waste, they are the brethren of shayateen. أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ هَذَا You finish your face three times, and then you wash your hand to your, just above your elbow, properly, not just like this, and you leave the other part. The whole hand up to your elbow three times. Right hand, and then left hand. And you get some water, and you sprinkle it out, and you go like this. And then you wash your ears, watching. Okay, you wash your ears and you put a sababa, the one you say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, inside your ears and you clean your ears like this. Okay? There's another hadith that you can do once and twice. Just let us make it basic. You just go once with the same water, clean your ears from the back and inside. Okay? And then your right foot up to your ankle and your left foot. That is it. That will take you a minute. That will take you a minute. And then you perform prayer. Let us show you how to perform prayer so there is no excuse for anyone. Let us begin with what is compulsory in prayer. We're not going to worry about the sunnah because I know that there are many brothers here and sisters that probably don't know how to pray. All you say after you, mind you, before this, I'm sorry to say. When you go to the toilet, there's nothing to be ashamed of. We Muslims, we wash. Okay? We wash our private parts. Okay? When you go to the toilet and you urinate, you wash your whole, your private part, and you wash it with your, with, with a bucket. Okay? There's nothing wrong with this. Inna Allah al haq. Okay? Allah is not ashamed about the truth. And then your, your backside, if you, if you obviously, you, you've, um, you've done feces or whatever, you also get a bucket, you pour with your left hand side and you clean your private part with your left hand. When you finish, you go and wash your hands. Okay, wash your hands. This is the most appropriate. Okay, we are not like these people who just go in there and they do whatever and they come out of there. A'udhu Billah. Muslim is clean. Muslim is clean, body wise and inside them, inshaAllah. After this, as I said, you make wudu. After you finish wudu, just imagine that we are praying the compulsory prayer which is Fajr. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed prayers, five prayers. Five prayers. Fajr, morning prayer, before sunrise. Dhuhr, when your shadow is the same. Okay? When, you're, when the shade of your body is the same. Okay? I'm sorry, the shadow is the same. And then Asr, when your body, okay, shadow is twice. This is Asr. Maghrib, when sun sets, and Aisha is the latest prayer, which is another hour approximately after Maghrib. Remember, these three prayers you pray for, for, for. 
except the morning prayer you pray to. Okay, remember, before sun rises you pray to. After sun sets you pray three. And all the other prayers, how many? Four. Four. Remember, remember the sun. Sun before rises two. After it sets three, and all the rest are four. Very simple. After you make wudu and you prepare yourself, you say Allahu Akbar. Place your hand here, place your hand here, place your hand a little bit below. That is fine, there are many narrations. And then I'm going to teach you inshallah how, how to perform the compulsory prayer. Then you begin, I'm not going to do any sunnah. Okay? Then you read Al-Fatiha. Al-Fatiha, the opening of the Quran. Okay? This is compulsory. And for those brothers and sisters that don't know it, I would not, I would really recommend that after we finish this, that you tell us, and I'll take each brother, inshallah, aside, and take another brother to take, make, make sure that they teach them. And there's, not, there's nothing that you should be embarrassed about. Muhammad Hassan said, two types of people will not seek knowledge. Two types of people will not seek knowledge. Those who are arrogant, and we have a major problem with this. We have a major problem. Many of the brothers seek knowledge for a short period of time, and then you don't see them. They think that they are too scholarly. And this is a major problem, wallah. This is a major problem. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us all. So arrogance will deprive a person from seeking knowledge, and also when a person is shy, or she's shy. They shy. Okay, but ask, inshallah, if you, if you don't know something, ask, don't be embarrassed about it. As I said, you say, Allahu Akbar. And you read Al-Fatiha. You seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil shaitan. You say, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani ar-rajim, the cursed shaitan. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, most gracious, most merciful. And you, then you read Al-Fatiha, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, until the end. Okay? And then you say, Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest. Then there you say, Subhan Rabbi al -Azim. When you are in a position, you are bound. Okay? Three times. And then you say, when you finish, you say, Sami Allahu liman hamid. Allahumma rabbana lak alhamd. Allah has heard those who are grateful to Him. That's what you say. Sami Allah liman hamid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has heard those who are grateful to Him. And then you say, Rabbana lak alhamd. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah, to you belongs, subhanallah, all grace. To you belongs everything, oh Allah. Lak alhamd, I, I praise you Allah, I thank you Allah for everything that I have. Ahmaduka ya Allah, I praise you. And then you say Allahu Akbar and you go down in a prostrating position and then you say Subhan Rabbi al-A'la. Glory to His Most High three times. If you want to stay a little bit longer, you may. Make the dua that you wish. Then you sit back. You say, what do you say? Rabbi and... Okay, Rabbi, I that's sufficient. You don't need to say this, we we'll worry about this sunnah. You sit back after you said Subhanahu Rabbi Al-Ala three times. You sit back for a short period of time, and then you go back on, and you say Subhanahu Rabbi Al-Ala. You do exactly the same thing. You get up, and you do exactly the same thing, but the second ruk'ah, you sit down, you say, At-Tahiyyatu Lillah. My dear brothers and sisters, Islam is so basic. It is so easy. If you don't know, you, pe you actually grab a piece of paper, say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Islam is a simple religion. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Mu'ad ibn Jabal, he said, Yassiru wa la tu'assiru, bashiru wa la tunafiru. He said to him, when he sent him, when he sent him to Yemen, he said, Give glad tidings. Islam is a glad tidings. Islam, Islam rescues you from oppression. Yes, Cyril, make it simple. Look at the people huh? and make it simple upon them. <laughs> yes, Cyril, wa la tu'assiru. Make it simple and don't make it difficult. Give glad tidings. Wa la tunafiru. Don't make people run away from you. So, it's important for us Muslims to understand this, to simplify it. When you finish this, as I said, 
اسي التحيات لله والصلاه والطيبات والسلام على النبي ورحمه الله وبركاته والسلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا امر اسكت ان يدنا ذيس اجنا اكيد ان يسال الله صل على محمد بعد ان تم صلاه على ابراهيم على ان يفنيش ذيس ثاني يسي السلام عليكم ورحمه الله السلام عليكم so the beginning of prayer الله اكبر and the ending of prayer السلام عليكم ورحمه الله if you forget while you are while you have while you are praying and you remember that you are not you have not cleansed yourself you haven't made wudu or you've broken wind while you are standing what do you do in this case you just withdraw from the lines and you go and make wudu and you come back and pray you don't need to say salam alaykum wa salam because the salam alaykum wa is the completion of the prayer okay the completion of prayer so as i said you finish you say salam alaykum wa salam alaykum this is the prayer so simple so easy you are in desperate need for let me finish with this amazing verse in the quran which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the the danger of neglecting his remembrance allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said waman arada an dhikri fa inna lahu ma'isha and indeed whoever rejects my remembrance whoever rejects the remembrance of allah and the greatest remembrance that a person can perform is this prayer. That's why my dear brothers and sisters, all the rulings, all the ahkam, all the faraid, everything that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was informed, it was through Gabriel. Gabriel descended on Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said, "Say this, say that." Except for prayer, when Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was descended to the heavens, Allah subhanahu wa taala spoke to him directly, and Allah has said that your people must pray fifty times. Then Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam descended. And he saw Musa, and Musa alayhi salatu wasalam has said to him, "What did Allah subhanahu wa taala tell you?" He said that Allah has commanded me to tell my people to pray fifty times a day. He said, "Your people cannot." You don't want to ask Allah to reduce it. He went and asked Allah. Allah subhanahu wa taala made him forty-five. He kept on going between Musa and Allah subhanahu wa taala until Allah subhanahu wa taala has made it five prayers. And Musa has said. Get up and ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to decrease the amount of praise. Well, Allah Musa was right. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Five prayers we can't perform. Musa has said to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, "Go back and ask Allah to reduce them." Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was embarrassed. But Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, the mercy of Allah, if you pay five prayers, it is equal to fifty prayers in reward. That's how merciful Allah is. That's how much Allah wants you. To come closer to Him, Allah has said, "Whoever rejects my remembrance, surely, Wallahi al-Azim, they will have a life of misery." Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Whoever rejects my remembrance, surely they'll have a life of misery." When Ashuruhu yawm al-Qiyamah, that person will become blind the day of judgment. This person, that blind person, called Rabbi, li ma hashatani ama. This person would say, "Oh Allah, why have you placed me blind?" What is the reason? What have I done, Allah? I'm innocent. Allahu Akbar. Allah with Allah, I praise anyone. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the Most Just, would say to him, "Qala kadalik atad kaayatuna." Allah would say, "My signs was brought to you." Have a look at the magnificent, magnificent universe. Look at the signs of the Creator. Look at the sign of the the final revelation of the Quran. Look at the signs. My dear brothers and sisters, I want to tell you something. If a Jew was sitting here, and a Christian was sitting here, and a Muslim was sitting here, and you tried to convince people about each one's trying to convince people about Judaism or Islam or Christianity, and the Christian would say that you know Moses did these miracles and these miracles, he was able to heal the dead and the leper and all that, and this man would say, "Give me your proof. Where's your proof? I want to see it." He would say, "I don't have it." Musa, just imagine, I'm sorry. Jesus, a Jew would say, "I, you know, Musa had nine miracles, and each one is greater than the other." And this person would say, "Okay, show me the walking stick of Musa. Show me some of these miracles." This person would say, "I've got no evidence at the moment." And the Muslim, he will come to a Muslim and ask the Muslim, "Where's your proof?" Say the Quran. The Quran. This Quran that continues on being. The fastest from it, the fastest Quran religion in the world, the most read book in the world, the most memorized book in the face of the earth, the the book that has not been altered anywhere. 
You got from far east, far west, it is one Quran. People have been, came into Islam because of reciting this Quran. Scientists, after they have scientifically proven something, they find it in the Quran. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Be proud of that you're a Muslim. The miracle is still here and it will continue on until the Day of Judgment. So there's no sufficient evidence for anyone to come and say, Allah, Allah didn't know. You didn't know because you didn't want to know. You didn't know because you have deprived yourself from believing in God. You're lying to yourself. You're basically saying that this amazing world, amazing universe was created by itself. Magnificent universe was created by itself. You're saying this human body that your heart pumps million times that was created by itself. Ya Subhana Khalaq Azim. So for that reason we need to understand this. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala would say, Kadalika Atatka Ayatullah. Indeed, my science was brought to you. Fanasita, you've forgotten it. You've neglected it. You've forgotten it. You were too busy in this worldly life. You've been influenced by this worldly life. You have become a worshipper to the dollar, or you have become a worshipper to your, yourself, or you've become a worshipper to the king, or you've become a worshipper to other things. Nasita, you've forgotten it. The majority of people have been influenced by this worldly life. It is another God that's been worshipped today. Muhammad said, He said to every nation there's a trial, affliction, and the trial and affliction for my people is wealth. People, day and night, all they care about is money, money, money. Every second question, can I buy a house uh, through the bank or whatever? Everywhere I go, I went to Brisbane, half of the questions were about this. All they care about is wealth. How can we do this and how can we do this? Ya subhanallah al Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Fanasita, you've forgotten it. You have neglected. You have forgotten that you're a servant of God. You have forgotten that you can't breathe without the will of God. You've forgotten it. And today you'll be neglected. Ya subhanallah al So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen us and to keep us steadfast. And to, meet, to make us of those that, that perform prayer. And wallahi, if you don't, you're a dead person. Wallahi al-Azim. Whomever does not pray, they are dead. Their soul is dead. And Muhammad has said this not right. Muhammad said, مثل الذي يذكر الله والذي لا يذكر الله مثل الحي والميت. The example of the person that remembers Allah. And the person that does not remember Allah like the living and dead. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this blessed gathering that we will enter Jannah together and we will enter Jannah into, door, in, into the door of prayer. Inshallah, all of our brothers and all of our sisters and all the non-Muslims. Ya Rabb, O oh Allah, guide them to Islam. O oh Allah, guide them to Islam. O oh Allah, guide them to Islam.